Welcome to Real World Nuxt 3. This is the hands-on course for learning how to build web apps using Nuxt.js. We'll go through the essential Nuxt.js topics such as server-side rendering and fetching using Vue.js within Nuxt.js, file-based routing, layout, using state in an SSR environment, and most importantly, the various rendering modes. We'll learn all of these by building a production-looking website called Nuxt.js Examples. The homepage will show a bunch of posts. You can click on more to go to the post details page where it shows the content of that post. Click on the category. You'll get to the category page where it shows all the posts belonging to that category. Click on the categories link on the navigation bar. It will go to the categories page where it shows a list of categories. Click on any one of these items, you'll get to the category page again. The app has four pages and they are interconnected. In a production setting, the contents of these posts can be coming from a database, an external API, a headless CMS, or a file-based CMS like Nux content. But to focus on learning Nux.js, we'll use a mock API to represent any one of these data source options. In practice, Nux.js is rarely used alone. So we'll be combining Nux.js with other real-world tools such as TypeScript and SAS to create this app. To follow along with this hands-on course, you'll need to clone the project template that we have prepared for this course. Let's take a look what's inside. First and foremost, the mock ABI that I mentioned is implemented using JSON server with this db.json file. JSON server is a simple Node.js tool that can quickly bootstrap a fake ABI server. In a data folder, you'll find some URLs that we can use to fetch from the mock ABI. I have also defined some custom types here, such as post and post details to work with the ABI. If you're not familiar with TypeScript types, you can check out our TypeScript courses. In the Components folder, there's a Render Markdown component for conveniently rendering the mock data. We'll be using this in the next lesson. There's some styles in the Assets folder, including some colors that we'll be using and some global styles. To run this app, we have to first install all the dependencies with npm install. Then we can start the mock ABI with this command. This is a custom command that I defined in the package JSON file. As you can see, we're running this mock ABI at port 3001. And now we can run the Nux app with npm run dev. This app will now be running at port 3000. If we go to localhost 3000, we'll see the default homepage. This homepage is defined in the pages folder as index.view. In the next lesson, we'll fetch some data from the mock ABI and render some actual contents on this page. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the main feature of Nuxt.js, server-side rendering, SSR. SSR allows an app to fetch data and render the components into HTML on the server side. This will create a faster loading experience as the components don't have to be loaded and rendered on the client side before the user can see the content. Now let's see how that works in the code. The project template already comes with the function to fetch a list of posts. We'll use that in the homepage. We're going to call the function using the await keyword because it returns a promise object, so we're unpacking it with a wait. Before we render the post, let's set up a main element to wrap the page content. Change the heading to Nux.js examples. We're gonna need a div in here. This is where we'll render the post. We'll render another div in here with v4, post in post, and a key binding. And for each post, will render just an H2 heading with the post title. Let's make sure they're showing up in the browser. 
if you check the source tab on the Chrome DevTools, you can see the actual HTML that gets sent from the server. This confirms that this page was rendered on the server. The second half of the SSR story is that the components will render again on the client side for a process called hydration. Hydration is the process of connecting the server rendered HTML to the corresponding component logic. Once the HTML and the logic are connected, the Nux app will function just like a classic single page app. This means that page transitions will not require a full page reload. Basically, after the initial load, all the component rendering will still occur on the client side, similar to a standard Vue.js app. Since the component logic will get executed again on the client side, we have a problem with our current code. Specifically, the getPost function is using the native fetch function to query the data. When a component runs on the server, it will fetch on the server. And when the component runs again on the client, it will fetch again on the client. Just like how it sounds, it's redundant. We can see a proof of this by looking at the network tab. Refresh the page if you don't see anything here. And make sure you have the fetch XHR filter on. All ABI requests made on the client side will show up in here. This is the ABI request made to the mock ABI server. This means that the current fetching logic is not compatible with server-side rendering. An SSR compatible approach would enable us to fetch the data on the server and avoid redundant fetching on the client side. It would reuse the data that was fetched initially. To perform the fetching correctly, let's import get posts URL and remove get posts. Now we'll use the use fetch composable provided by Nuxt.js along with the get posts URL. And as you might have guessed it, use fetch is SSR compatible. Again, this will return the promise object, but this time we have to destructure the result to get the data property. This is the posts. Let's rename this data to post. Although the homepage looks like nothing has changed, behind the scenes, we're only fetching from the server without another redundant fetch from the client. In the network tab, you can see that it's no longer making the posts request to the mock API server. Now we're getting some TypeScript errors. This is happening because TypeScript doesn't know the type of the result it got back from usefetch. To fix this, we can import the post type that I prepared and provide its type as a generic type parameter for usefetch. As you can see, all the type errors are gone. Technically, this is the array type of post because the query returns an array of posts. With this, the text editor can now recognize the type of the posts so it can provide better IDE support. Now let's render the category of each post. We want this to be a link. It doesn't go anywhere just yet, but in the future, this link will go to the category page. In here, we we'll render the category of the post. Since the post object is typed, it will show a list of properties when we're using the dot notation. A post object has a category property, and a category object has a name property. And now you can see the category on each post. To render the intro of the post, we have to use the render markdown component that comes with the project template. It requires a source prop. We're passing in the post intro. We don't need to import this component because Nuxt.js automatically imports everything from the components folder, the composables folder, and the utils folder. Moreover, there's no need to import framework provided functions such as usefetch from Nuxt.js and ref from Vue.js. Here's how the posts look now. The render markdown component comes with its own styles, but we still need additional styles for the rest of the page. First, add some classes to the elements. This is card, this is title, and this one is category. Now let's add some styles. We need a style tag that is scoped and it's SCSS for SAS. 
Since we'll be using the colors, we need to import them with use. Put some padding, border, and margin around each postcard. Set the font size for the title and the rest of the content in the card. Finally, add some margin around the category. Now it looks a bit better. We'll continue to work on the homepage in the next lesson. Specifically, we'll improve the UX by creating a hovering effect on each item with the help of ref and event from a standard Vue.js API.